I think the numbers can be extremely helpful for guiding our treatment in a number of ways. So say we start off with hyperosmolarity and we give the patient a treatment algorithm and we see the numbers coming down, we can feed that back to the patient and it really encourages them to carry on. Another um, situation may be that we've recommended they do all these treatments and the osmolarity isn't coming down. It might help us to recognize a compliance problem. And one of the things that I occasionally do is I measure their osmolarity in the clinic and it's a bit high and then I put a drop in and I repeat it 10 minutes later and the osmolarity's come down because the tears have been diluted. And I sort of say to them, look, you know, the, the treatment works. It's you know, up to you to actually do it. And it is onerous putting drops in six times a day. Another time that the numbers might be really useful is if the osmolarity is normal, but they're getting dry eye symptoms. It makes me think, well, you know, this isn't a hyperosmolarity issue, and it's more likely to be an inflammation issue. So that would help me to change my treatment focus to one towards inflammation. You know, I'm not just, you know, um, pushing on with something that doesn't work, you know, the patient's losing confidence. So it is incredibly helpful for sort of guiding one between the sort of hyperosmolarity route, compliance with treatments, or not hyperosmolar, more to do with inflammation.